But hello everyone, welcome to the Short Explanations Podcast. My name is Hyam and Tom is to the right of me or left, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, and today, today, we are talking browsers. Now, before we start, I do want to apologize. We did say we were gonna bring Yael to talk about VPNs. I messed up. That is next week because scheduling and times time zones are really difficult. I, I don't know if you understand this. Time zones are horrible. I mean, I understand why we have them, but so anyway, getting people onto the show and 9 p.m. We record Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Usually people are home. I mean, they're they're settled in. So it's we have we want to work around their schedules for that. So anyway, so next week we are going to have that. And today, today we want to talk about browsers, uh, what they are, not necessarily what they are, but which ones you should use, why you should use them, and just different things about browsers. Because you're going to hear a lot of how it's your real first line of defense for everything. And we want to make sure that is secure and you are getting the best, the best, not browser, but our experience, but the most security for it. So I'm going to let Tom start it off. Luckily, when it comes to browsers, um, it's it's pretty hard to go wrong today. Um, you know, on, on one hand, yeah, there's not really a ton of choice. Either everything is based on Chrome in some way. Like, even the brand new Microsoft Edge is just a repackaged Chromium browser. Uh, you know, Safari's got WebKit, and Chrome kind of grew from WebKit and then became Blink. And there's there's a whole history there. Regardless, um, it's very easy to choose a good browser as long as you choose Firefox or Chrome. And I realized that was an extremely loaded statement. And if you're yelling at me, that's probably the right thing. Uh, there's a lot of nuance to that. But in general, if a family member, if you are just looking for a browser to use or which browser to use, I personally love Firefox. That's my daily driver. And I've got no issues with Chrome. I think it's fine. I I moved so so I am not on my Linux desktop I am on my Mac and for me it's not that Safari or it's not that Firefox or Chrome is bad but Safari for me is optimized for OS 10 and so for me that's where I am and my backup is in fact Firefox for for a lot of it and then Chrome is also there because if you got two, what's a third one? It doesn't matter. We all have different use cases for it. Uh, but general browsing, definitely Safari, but it, we will talk about its limitations later. At school, I have a Windows computer. I like Edge. Um, I have a pen. It It's called inking. Don't, don't make fun of me, but it's called inking. But I don't really have a problem with Edge. It's It's... I like Firefox's privacy built-in things that they have going, but other than that, I'm on one of the th three or four main ones, so I'm good. Yeah, and the, the whole reason why we're focusing on the big browsers um, is because as the first line of defense on, on your connection to the internet, for the most part, right? It, your browser has to be this rock-solid piece of absolutely awesome software engineering. Right. It's got to be extremely well protected because it's getting assaulted by, you know, malicious ads and drive by downloads and just badly coded web pages. Right. Uh, it, it's basically how the, the vast majority of us interact with the Internet as we pop open Chrome and we go to a social media site. We rant about stuff um, with that piece of technology, because you're you're reaching out, you're quite literally executing code, you're displaying documents and files from places that you don't control and people you don't know, uh, your browser's job is to keep you safe. Um, and the, the big browsers, we're talking Firefox, Chrome, Edge, Safari, uh, they all have, you know, corporate backing. You know, some of them way bigger than others, right? Google is giant. Uh, Mozilla, who owns Firefox, is comparatively tiny. Uh, but there are companies and people and engineers and security teams always working to improve these browsers, right? They're they're handling bug reports, they're doing bug bounty stuff, uh, they're responding to uh, security researchers who give them issues to fix. Um, and you want to make sure that those issues are fixed as soon as possible. Uh, if you have a browser that is outdated or vulnerable to some kind of drive-by attack, um, you know, if, if you're out of date and if the attack is very new and if you roll those dice and get 
kind of unlucky, uh, then you could compromise your machine by going to the wrong place on the net. So having a browser that gets extremely timely security updates is paramount. It's, it used to be Chrome used to be on the Chrome, I think was the first one to issue auto updates. And I remember Firefox doing this only if you downloaded the new version, it was always, if you downloaded the new version, you would get auto updates and then you would say, okay, I got this. And it was, if you got not this one, this one, you need a, it's a core, it's a core update and you have to do the whole thing, but eventually Firefox. I turned off Firefox for a good long time. I was bleeding edge with Chrome. I had Chromebooks. And then I said, and, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes, but is Chrome too much within Google? Like, do I have to worry about Chrome spying on me? And the short answer is no. And so I didn't do anything. Firefox took a while to load. And then all of a sudden I, I tried it again and Firefox figured this out. Like it really, really did. And it is just as fast as Chrome. It's, it's, it works. It has the extension thing. So if you want an alternative, try Firefox. I really like it. Um, if you are in the Microsoft 36, whatever they want to call themselves ecosystem and your, and your corporations like using edge, you know what? Use one for your work and one for your not work. It just, and, and just, just to separate them out that that seems to work also just all of them are good and and i like i said i'm on os 10 uh safari is safari works really well on the mac so for general browsing i just find that, that that's fine the one of the main reasons why we're we're not talking about uh brave we're not talking about uh alternative browsers kind of the I don't want to even call them third party, right? Because like Safari and Edge are first party browsers or Chrome is a first party browser for a Chromebook. But like you you get it, right? The non-mainstream browsers. The the reason it's I first... Opera is where's Opera for because there's always that one person who uh, that, You know what? Opera. I'm gonna be very rude. I'm gonna say Opera doesn't even belong on this list anymore. Although it's got a, a, or it had, I don't know if it still does. It had a wonderful BitTorrent client built into it at one point. It was the browser that had everything um, be, before Chrome took over and, and ate the net. Um, but yeah, the, the reason why we're not talking about these non-mainstream alternative browsers, and I'm, I'm generally recommending against them, um, is because they take a little bit longer to get security updates in the majority of cases. Uh, in the... It's not their fault necessarily. It's just the nature of how they're constructed, right? Um, so a lot of alternate browsers will take, just like Microsoft took the Chromium project, right? Which is what Chrome is based on. It's an open source project sponsored by Google. So Microsoft took Chromium and then they made some changes and now they've got Edge. They've got their new browser, but it's based on Chromium. So what happens when the Chromium project gets a security update. Well, okay, Chromium gets it, and then obviously Chrome itself has to be built out of that, and Edge has to be built out of that. So but what What if you're like pretty far down that line? If you get like Firefox and then some intermediary browser, and then the final thing that you're using built on top of that, if Firefox has a security update, they've got to roll their updates and publish it then the intermediary browser has got to take that security patch and apply it to its code base. And then finally it makes it to the browser you are using. And that time lag, it usually isn't, you know, anything like weeks or months or anything, right? In the absolute worst case, I would imagine days, um, right? If, if not a couple hours to make it all the way down that chain. Um, but when we're talking about the browser and the thing that you interact the most with directly on the internet, do you want to handle that couple hour lag? Uh, I, you can. It's not like you're using your browser 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's not necessarily a death knell to go use something like Brave. Um, it's just more of a security posture thing, right? How much do you really care about what this browser gives you compared to others? And is it worth that, granted, rare in in pretty fiddly argument against its core security. Um, you know, you're not wrong. You're not necessarily putting yourself at risk by using an alternative browser. Uh, but for me, it just doesn't make sense to move away from the big guys. 
I mean, I feel like they're saying, well, let's use Brave because it has this something extra built in. And and we're going to get to this in a second, but I feel like we can recreate that something extra if you really want it. And it it's, 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 you know what? I want my browser to be as vanilla as possible. And if I want to augment it my way, I, I feel like I should be able to do it. It's... And and Chrome was like that for a really long time. Same with Firefox. Like that's what they did. And then they somebody said, "Well, I want to do this," and we're going to get into add-ons in a second. But I just feel like, like you said, it's 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 a derivative of a derivative. Now the problem is you probably have 30, 40 tabs open and an update. Even though they're going to so for an update for me is a royal pain because when I update. Not that I have that many tabs open. It's that I have to re-log into my password manager. And re-logging into my password manager takes a not insignificant amount of time. And and so for me, it's like, let me push the update. But but again, the longer you push the update, the 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 worse it's going to be for you. And I think I want to ask Tom, what are the, I mean, when they update, they're updating something, but I feel like you're just, un, if you get something hit in that day or two days, you're just unlucky uh, if you're yeah. following general security practices. Now, I'm really boring. I go, I don't know, to the same 10, 15 sites. I don't generally deviate. It's, I got my, my needs when I Google search, uh, I'm tr- I'm trusting that Google is is trying to filter out malicious sites. I'm assuming DuckDuckGo also does that. So there is some protection there. I'm not going to the deep dark corners of the internet. Uh, so if it's an extra day or two, but like you said, if there's it's I want to make sure that I'm getting the security updates timely. And and if it's a day or two, it's not that big of a deal. But I feel like I can recreate what what these features are by using first party browsers and augmenting with with additions or add-ons and uh and thank you for bringing up that perfect point because you yeah. know you're right you like most people they're not cl- clicking on random links or going to like shitty urls.com and clicking on everything that pops up right but the issue isn't necessarily the places you're going most sites on the internet or i i can't say most but Many sites on the internet uh, are serving advertisements, and a lot of those advertisements have tracking code that runs. Well, sometimes um, a, an ad host will just, they won't catch something where they think they're executing tracking code. They're actually executing some malicious JavaScript by a hacker who has, you know, one of these super hot, super fresh browser takedowns that Chrome and Firefox just patched an hour ago. It has happened before. Uh, it, granted, it's rare, right? You're, you're probably not going to be hit with a malicious ad that's got, you know, a zero day or one day payload. Um, but it, it has happened. Um, so, you know, does it increase your security profile a, a little bit marginally if you stick to the big browsers? Sure. Um, are, are you going to get instantly hacked if you choose something else? No. Uh, but add-ons are a perfect way uh, to help beef up that that security a little bit and make the internet, uh, I I say, even usable. Um, and uh, I I have to recommend uBlock Origin. uBlock Origin is an ad blocker. Um, even if you don't care about ads, even if you're a fan of the ad economy, um, blocking ads increases your security posture. It is less random, unverified code running in your browser, uh, and it's going to save you network resources and CPU cycles. Well, so let's first talk about uBlock Origin. So first, there's two uBlocks, and then there's an ad block and an ad block plus. So we are specifically saying uBlock Origin. Uh, the The word origin is the key here because it used to be ad block, then ad block plus. And then, then Google or somebody, I think somebody went to the ad block plus people and said, Hey, uh, can, how do we get in? And they're like, well, if you pay us, you can get in. So you do get ads using ad block plus. They are good at quote unquote, good ads. They're, they're from legitimate companies, these ad servers. So they make deals with Google and I think Facebook to make sure that the ads are at least legitimate, but they're still ads. UBlock is not UBlock Origin, but UBlock Origin basically is a content blocker and everything else. 
like Tom said, you don't want uh, it's it's this is not a political thing. It's if you want ads, unblock the site and that's fine. But what we're finding out is that there's very few stewards, uh, good stewards of 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 nice ads. Most of them, if they put one ad, they're really, really obtrusive and they're putting more and more and more in. You don't find one site with here, this little tiny ad here in the corner that makes us some money. It's usually, they're trying to find ways with pop-ups again and they're trying to find all these really shady things. The other thing is, is that if their website loads slow due to JavaScript and third-party cookies and everything else, that will stop it. And so the website loads faster and when they, they throw up that, that sign that says, hey, we make money on your ads, you can make a decision. That was always the answer. You can make a decision on what to do uh, and say, you know what, fine, you can come in, I will unblock it if you promise not to bother me too much. But having you block Origin does save a lot of headaches later on. Uh, I, I personally recommend and do install it on any family member's computer that I work on. Uh, and it's it's just a browser extension, right? It, it works in uh, Chrome and Firefox, I know for sure. Um, you know, and that's, that's one of the other reasons you want to go with kind of the big players. Their add-on market and their add-on compatibility is usually a little better um, because a lot of these, you know, alternative browsers are based on the original source code of the big ones. It can be compatible, but it might be a little weird to install stuff. Regardless, um, installing uBlock Origin on your family's computers will mean that when they search something like VLC player in Google and they click the first link, they're going to go to the actual open source software download site. Uh, and they're not going to go to whatever ad Google decided to put at the very top of the page that gives them some nasty malware, um, which happens a lot. I've cleaned up enough computers with that kind of stuff. It's uh, uBlock will prevent that issue. Um, and uh, like you were saying, it's a general content blocker. So even things that aren't ads technically, but they're still super annoying, like the big popover of, oh, hey, if you like this article, you'll love this one or sign up for our email newsletter. Um, uBlock Origin has the ability to add various lists and they're just in the options. You just go and you tick all the boxes of the ones you want. One of those categories is called annoyances. You tick that box, all those newsletter popovers are gone. And if for some reason one gets through, you right click, you block it. It's done. Uh, so I, I can't recommend anything more than that. I love you block. So the, I will say that if sometimes, sometimes on some websites, it breaks the website. And yeah. uh, I, I'm just thinking of one, my local newspaper site. If it's a subscribe only thing, it, it like doesn't show you anything. It's just empty. Usually they give you the first paragraph or something. Usually those websites where they have the condensed article and you have to click read more, that read more is defined as an ad. So just, just FYI, if a website doesn't load properly, you may have to disable uBlock Origin for that reason because it's blocking the mechanism to, to render it properly. Again, that's but so like you said, you install it on all your family members' computers. Just remember that they call you with this weird thing. That's probably why. Disable your ad blocker to see just for that website, just to see if it works. If it works, that's great. Then turn it back on. Yeah. Um, I'll lead Tom into the next one, which is our other favorite uh, extension that you want to add or you want to think about. Your favorite password manager. Uh, so last pass bit warden one password and what have you right um we we have covered password managers a lot um they live in your browser for the most part install it that's it's, it it's easy so literally i i think we were talking about this those are the only two add-ons that we have and i don't think we can recommend another one so just be careful. So here's the problem with, with add-ons. They are programs that Chrome or Firefox, whatever deems necessary. You can write them if they're just basic JavaScript, they are not hard to write. So something like, let's, let's take Adblock Plus because I think that's a good example. Adblock Plus does something, all right? You have it installed, you have it installed, it gets updated. Somebody comes and, and offers them money to do something else. If you don't notice it, they are they are changing the way you see your website by adding only Google ads. The problem is, is what happens if, and they haven't done this, but others have, 
they say, well, can you give us tracking information or can you do something uh, more nefarious? You're, 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 uh, you're a verified content uh, profile or you're a uh, programmer. You're a verified programmer. And so you have your name on there. And Google is not going to know the difference unless there's too many complaints. So you start off slow, you start off slow, and then you start adding and adding and adding, and it ends up becoming a problem. Or they just go totally rogue. They sell. They sell to a company, and you're not going to notice because it just keeps on getting updates. And then six months later, all of a sudden, you're bombarded with ads. I mean, and this goes on a whole bunch of things. These goes on iOS apps, Android apps, little things like that. Or you may get a, hey, we're going to do some permission change, and... And you're going to think nothing of it because, hey, it's really good. So just remember that an add-on is a program that you're allowing to run in your 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 really strong, secure computer, browser, whatever. And you are you still have to research them and you have to keep on researching them. So you want to stick to really big corporate, like real big, good stewards of these extensions. And the problem is, is that there aren't too many. I don't know of that many things. The other uh, that that I want to do, like for example, HTTPS anywhere. The EFF wrote that it's a great extension. It made sure that it would redirect you to the HTTPS version of all these websites. Well, first off, you can just type HTTPS. Google automatically tries to default you to HTTPS. But here's the good news: most of the internet, 90, 95 plus percent, is already HTTPS. There's no need to do that now, and and so they've EFF has in fact deprecated that extension. I mean, there's others that are going to block different things or augment something. But ask yourself: Do you really need it? Like, do you really, do you really need the, uh, the one that gets you a little coupon on some website, or is it just going to live there and constantly bother you every time you click on something? So ask yourself, do you really need this or do you just, is it like, is it just another ad for some company? There are add-ons that will claim to unblock content around the web, right? The the in the VPN example that we had uh, before, you know, trying to watch uh, the the BBC online if if you're in America, um, there are add-ons that are like, oh yeah, you can go to the BBC and click this thing, and you know, we'll automatically open up a VPN connection for this web page. Um, what they're doing how a lot of these things work is they're actually running the vpn like an open endpoint on your computer um and then when you click unblock this content you go out someone else's internet connection uh and someone else can go out yours that's the trade um and that seems a little dangerous to me uh i i probably wouldn't install that um you know a lot of these coupon add-ons are watching where you go watching what you click on and selling that data I mean, that's that's how they make their money um you know if you see a commercial on tv for an add-on um they're not just giving that away from the goodness of their hearts they're making money on this somehow um so yeah watch what add-ons you install um it's I wouldn't say it's super common that add-ons attack people or, you know, have something nefarious going on. Um, but, you know, it's like any other piece of software. Uh, software that's not there, it's really hard to compromise. I just feel like it, we have this ecosystem right in the beginning where add-ons were for everything and we installed all of them to make mm -hmm. it. And then it slowed things down. And I couldn't tell what was exactly slowing it down. But I just felt like having a menu bar full of icons couldn't be helpful. Now, by the way, if you don't know, Chrome opens every single instance of Chrome in its separate task. So each add-on basically runs, I think, in its own task bar. So you have a whole list of just Chrome, 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 Chrome eating away at your RAM. And we didn't even talk about this, the the RAM, the RAM hog that Chrome and both Firefox are. But anyway, so the, the short answer is go through your extensions. Um, if you're not using them, like uh, Google Docs offline, like if you're not going to be offline, you don't need the extension. If you're going to be online, just it, it's there. It's maybe they're preloading it or something, but ask yourself, do I really need this? Do I... 
is this beneficial? If, if you can make if you can make a case like this really helps me. Um, there are some augmenting of the websites for for accessibility. Those are fine, absolutely. But if it's just there to try and save you money or or multiple clipboard or something like that, can you find another way in your workflow to make your life easier? And and go, the other one people like are vertical tabs. If you could find one that does vertical tabs, that's great. Style tabs. But I don't have that many tabs open. So for <laughs> me, I don't do that. You are so and, lucky. <laughs> yeah, I don't have. So I, I, I don't know if there's too much more to say about add-ons other than they're little mini programs. So uh, here, oh, my school blocks all, um, all installations, all exec files, but they don't block Chrome extensions. So sometimes, so again, there's another vector. It's it's less security for that reason. Uh, and then you find out all these kids have all these extensions that just slow down their computer because they don't do anything. Yeah, and if, if you don't want to fully commit to uninstalling that extension, uh, you can just disable it instead. You can just say, hey, don't run this. It'll keep it in your list. And if you want it back, you just, you know, re-enable it. But um, if you're not sure whether you need it and you kind of want to get rid of it to see how things function, uh, just disable it. It's temporary and it's easily undone. So I have underneath um, the history of browsers, uh, just really quick, like where they came from and what they did, just if you didn't hear about this. So so if everyone, rem and, and I'm getting to why Edge is, why you should try Edge again. I guess that's the little like, push we're doing so we all had ie6 and for most people it just came it came bundled in with microsoft and it was fine it was fine there was nothing necessarily wrong with it back in 1996 uh we wanted but then there was this other company uh it was netscape navigator and it worked and everything else and this is where if, if you remember in the late 90s they were suing each other because microsoft was getting too big the problem is then all of a sudden we had these explode like fast forward we had these explosions of browsers there were just so many and and they were all based on uh they were all based on firefox which is by the way a direct descendant of netscape navigator but firefox was awesome like it was really good and and it was fast and people were going to it and it was slimmed down. The problem is that over the years, it started building back up. Same with Chrome. Then all of a sudden, 2007, Chrome was released and it was supposed to be super fast and it was. And then all of a sudden we had extensions and they started adding all this bloatware and it got really slow. And it really drained the battery of the laptops and everything else. So. As we come back from that, both browsers now, both uh, uh, Firefox and Chrome, have become much more lean and much better on battery life and and just general RAM usage. But they're still fighting better or worse. Firefox still has a little memory problem every once in a while. You do have to restart it. Chrome still has that. Like I said, everything is its own instance. So you can close a tab. It won't kill everything. But it's still persistently running everywhere. So... Like I said, it's it's they all have their little problems, but they all have a whole lot of benefits if you figure out how to use them properly. For uh, for mobile, um, yep. I, if you're on Android, Chrome is good. Firefox is good. Um, I wouldn't use if like if for Android phones, I wouldn't use your default browser app. Uh, typically, the one shipped with the Android Open Source Project is fine. It it gets its timely updates, um, but you know, just like browsers on any other platform, use the big ones. Use the names you recognize. Um, you know, for for iOS, uh, the answer is a little easier and a little a little infuriating. Honestly, uh, every single browser on iOS is just Safari under the hood. You can change like the stuff around it. So you've got like your bookmarks and favorites and you log in with Firefox profiles or Chrome, but the actual rendering engine underneath all the user interface stuff, it's just Safari. It's iOS based Safari. And Apple so far uh, has not let anyone write their own browser engine or make their own browser and push it to iOS. Um, now, there are rumors and, and talk that Apple is going to change that and maybe soon, 
uh, hopefully soon, because I would really like actual Firefox back on my phone. It's the one thing I miss after switching to iOS. Um, for the record, if you install Firefox on your Android phone, add-ons work. You can install uBlock Origin in your browser on your phone, and that is the coolest thing in the world. It's so again, it's one of those, you may have to manage your expectations. If you want pure speed and you want everything to work, Safari and iOS is where it's at. But if you're doing real research and you're saying, you know what, I may want this somewhere else. Like I want to go back to my work computer or my home computer and I want to see what I was looking up. That's when you probably want to have Chrome on there to sign. You want to be signed into Chrome on your phone, even though it is Safari, but Chrome still does its its thing of syncing your tabs and everything else over there. So just be aware of that. Like I said, I'm on a Mac all day. So for me, all of this just works and I'm really happy. And again, Safari has all the cool stuff that iOS allows, whereas the others have to be blessed with it. So Android, again, I guess it's, I mean, Chrome is the default one at this point, right? Unless it's, or... Safari, it's Samsung's. Yeah, for certain phones, Chrome will be the default, but not every phone. I mean, that's a different topic by normal phones, but that's 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 a different. Again, all of this is is going back to it's stick with the big companies. The big companies have something to lose. If they do something wrong, it's going to generate huge, huge negative PR. And if it's bad enough, people will start leaving in droves. And for Google, they, they, they need those advertising dollars. They, that's their, that's their company. Firefox. I mean, they're trying to stay alive. They're trying to do, they're trying to be better. It's the healthy competition, but if they did something wrong, people are just going to turn them off. So all of this is saying find the corp find the big players um and they're not stealing your data it's this idea that that they're doing chrome has the google chrome has no vested interest in it they want that browser market share what they may do is they may be very slow to adopt anti-tracking technologies like we've seen that in the past but they're not actively doing it to track you they're trying to do it because that's their business model so so, but Chrome eventually does get them. So you want to make sure to stick with the big guys. There was some drama recently about uh, Google changing the in-browser APIs to for content blocking. That would effectively have killed uBlock Origin. I think the internet made enough of a stink that they've rolled those plans back. Uh, and I, I do know that uh, if I remember correctly, and, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say that Mozilla committed to not pushing Google's view of the future forward. And, uh, you know, they're, they're going to keep you block origin in service for the foreseeable future. Again, competition is very good in, in, in almost everything. General is good. The last thing, I think this is the last thing. So Safari has extensions. Just if you didn't know this, it has extensions, but you block origin is not there. And, and they're going to be like, well, you said to do it. What's, what's the deal? So Safari has their own tracking, uh, eliminator. So they, so Safari works on privacy based tracking. So you will see ads, but you won't see a lot of the tracking stuff behind them. So you have to make your choice on what you want and you want to go full U block origin and, and download Chrome or Firefox. That's great. But if you're just trying to from, stay away from third party cookies and other tracking, tracking things, Safari does do that. It's like, it's like a pared down scale of U block origin. So if you want the full thing, Chrome, Chrome and Firefox. If you're okay with some ads that that pass their their tracking tests, then Safari again is there for you. I, th I think that's it, right? I don't. Yeah. I, I think we're good. If, again, if we don't you have, have any hot takes or feedback, uh, please join the Signal Group. Uh, I would love to to chat about this stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, block those ads. It'll so happen. again, and so just to end the show with just some some shameless self promotion. Again, we have the Signal Group. You can do that. You can email us. You can you can find us on Mastodon. You can you, you can still tweet us. We're still there. Um, let's say subscribe. 
You can subscribe, help us on YouTube. That's also good. So just find us. We want to talk about this stuff. We like it. If you have topics you want to discuss, find us and we will do that. With that said, I think we're done. And next week, we're hopefully talking about VPNs again with, with some experts. That said, have a good night and we will see everyone next week. Have a good one. Bye, everybody.